Hello, thanks for joining us. This is James, your host, for another edition of Immunological Exploration. Today we're going to discuss lysozyme chemistry to better understand how pathogens meet their demise. We start in the mouth and move all the way to the anus, and this compromises our lumen. The lumen is where commensal bacteria reside. Nutri nutrients get absorbed via digestion, and pathogens try to invade. We may view this as being inside, but our body views this as an external environment. The lumen can be dangerous for pathogens. The skin has a naturally acidic environment of around a pH of 6.5. We start in the mouth and our digestive enzymes like amylase greet the pathogen in an attempt to, to kill it. If it does not succeed, then the pathogen goes with the food down the esophagus to the stomach. Here it is greeted with HCL. Remember kids, don't play with HCL in the lab. It's the real deal. Once the pathogen leaves the stomach, it goes to the duodenum, where the pH rises to nearly 8 to counteract, counteract the HCL. Many simple pathogens aren't equipped for this pH roller coaster, and they die. However, some never reach the end of the roller coaster, and that's because we remember how antibodies tag pathogens for phagocytosis by macrophages and other killer cells. Here we show phagocytosis in a little bit more detail. Here the phagolysosome is holding our pathogen and the lysosome is on its way to the phagolysosome to join up and release a toxic, pay toxic payload of lysozyme to kill the said pathogen. And here's where we meet lysozyme. Lysozyme is unique in that it targets specific portions of the bacteria cell wall specifically the beta-1,4 linkage. This breaking of the linkage will cause a catastrophic change in the osmolarity of the cell and cause it to essentially collapse under its own weight. For those of you who want more specific chemistry, here it is for you. Here's a fun fact, kids. This video was also made by a fun guy. Get it? <laughs> okay, moving on. Let's quickly review our acid-base terminology. Here we see the definition of acids and bases. Arrhenius viewed acids, acids as producing an H+, with a base producing OH-. Bronsted Lowry then came along to tell us that acids are proton do donors and that bases are proton acceptors. And finally, Lewis came and told us that acids are electron pair acceptors while bases are electron pair donors. Here's a simple general acid base catalysis. This shows the full proton being transferred. Here we see a little bit more about amino acids and some of their different acidic capabilities. The lower the pKa, the more acidic. And here we see how some of the side chains range from very basic to very acidic as well, and these interactions are notable. And they're notable right here with the general side chains interacting to show another acid base catalysis. Here we have a specific catalysis by either H plus or OH minus. Just remember, kids, when we're dealing with SN1 reactions, the positive ion doesn't stay positive for long, and disassociating from a neutral to a positive or minus does take some time. Another overview that we should touch on is the nucleophilic cleavage and ox redox reactions. Nucleophilic substitutions, shown here, where the nucleophile comes in to attack the carbonyl carbon, ultimately kicking off another leaving group. But don't worry, kids, he didn't really want to be there anyways. Here with cleavage re reactions, the key takeaway is that we can have carbon ions carbocations, or the dreaded free radicals. With redox reactions, it's important to remember the acronym leo goes Ger. Loss of electrons equals oxidation, and gain of electrons equals reduction. Now let's get back to the lysozyme. Isn't 
the lie says I'm pretty. Here we show the cleavage point for the beta 1-4 linkage that we discussed earlier. Here the it takes the NAM from this stable chair conformation and kind of wrestles it to this half chair conformation causing bond strain which allows it to be broken more easily. Here's the proposed mechanism of lysozyme. We can see that the residue is being attacked by the glutamate 3 to 5 and that glutamate is acting as the acid catalyst. The aspartate 52 is acting as our base. Here, when we have the initial cleavage and part of the substrate being released, we see that the aspartate 52 actually stabilizes the oxocarbocation. And here, lastly, to finish it off, we see that water transfers a proton to, to the base to stabilize it so it can go back to its normal conformation, leaving the, the linkage separated and cleaved into a smaller unit and thus effectively winning the war for us. Water is our friend and helps us win the battles. Oxygen isn't just electronegative, kids. It's electro-awesome. Congratulations. Now you understand more about the crazy awesome enzyme we call lysozyme. Without it, we may not be spending this time together, so let's give it a big or little hand to our good friends lysozyme. Thank you for your time, and we'll catch you next time.